Today marks 10 years since the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. More than two dozen people, almost all of them children, were killed in that attack. On December 14, 2012, a gunman entered the school armed with an AR-15 rifle and opened fire. 20 students and six of the school's staff members died. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy paid his respects to the victims and their families earlier today on the Senate floor. My sorrow today is for what we lost 10 years ago today, for the genius and the talent that was distinguished from this earth, those kids and those educators, those teachers. But also, my sorrow today is, is for the fact that it, it took Sandy Hook to wake this country up to what had been happening in front of us every single day. I want to bring in now Scarlett Lewis. She is the mother of JT and Jesse Lewis. Je uh, Jesse was just six years old when he was killed during the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School 10 years ago. Uh, you are also the founder of the nonprofit Jesse Lewis Choose Love Movement. Scarlett, that's part of what has made your story so unique. It, it, it's hard to imagine your grief on any given day, let alone today, but so much of your message has been one of trying to bring people together, trying to embrace love, trying to embrace the strength in all of us. How are you doing today? You know, my focus for the last 10 years has been on love, and that's because my six-year-old son, Jesse, wrote a message on our kitchen chalkboard shortly before he died. Three words, phonetically spelled because he was just learning to write, nurturing, healing, love. And I realized when I saw that, that that was the solution, that that would have addressed the root cause of what happened that day at Sandy Hook, and it would have prevented it. If the shooter had essential life skills, if he had been able to face his pain and the bullying that he endured, if he had been able to give and receive love, the tragedy would never have happened. It's it's pretty simple. Hurt people hurt people. Mm. And uh, that's a hopeful statement because there's always something that we can do with compassion to help those people that are hurting. And, you know, I, you played that little clip of Senator Murphy this morning. Uh, you know, to say that it took Sandy Hook to wake us up, that was 10 years ago. And I don't know what progress we've made with school shootings. Uh, we had Uvalde, which was almost a carbon copy of Sandy Hook 10 years later. I think that uh, I'm hoping that me speaking now will wake everyone up to realize that we can't wait on our politicians. We can't wait on our leaders to fix this. If they could have, they would have. It is going to be us. We are responsible for our children's safety, health, and well-being, and there are things that we can do, and we need to do them today. And we know that positive action is the opposite of anxiety, so it will make us feel better, and it will also lead to correcting this horrendous problem that continues to go on out of control and unabated. And Scarlett, since you mentioned Uvalde, you know, there are so many other parents of young victims who are experiencing what you've experienced for a decade. And just from the way you're speaking with us, it's clear that you've, you've, you've found a way to channel the grief into action, into some type of positive change. According to my notes here, your son helped save the lives of several of his classmates. So something running in the family here when it comes to helping others. What's the advice? How does one harness that kind of depression and try and move it into a strength um, to help others and use it for good? That's a great question. And you know what? It was a choice that I made. I had someone come to me to talk about what the future would look like for me after having lost a child to violence. And that was not a future that I wanted to have. I had a surviving son who was looking to me to model uh, what, what not only learning from, but growing through and being strengthened by tragedy could look like. And I knew that I didn't want to live the rest of my life fighting against something. I wanted to live it 
for something, the most powerful element in the universe that unifies us, and that is love. Fear divides us. Love connects us. We are stronger together. And so by, you know, living the last 10 years of my life really in service to our children, dedicating my life to being part of the solution and to keeping our kids safe, uh, that has that that love and 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 hope that I have been giving, I get as well. And that's the science behind compassion and action. That's what we teach in the Choose Love movement. And uh, you know, I've I've just absolutely harnessed all of my energy into spreading this positive message that I know would have saved my son's life, and I know that it can reduce and prevent so much of the suffering that we're seeing now. And Scarlett, on that note of strength and action. You and your family were among the first to sue conspiracy theorist Alex Jones for what he repeatedly said, uh, claims that the mass shooting at Sandy Hook uh, were simply a hoax, all of these lies that were untrue and so injurious to your family and others who were dealing with this. Tell us about that journey, your decision, and how you're feeling now. I literally had to make that decision to hold Alex Jones accountable. Uh, um, you know, that was uh, really torturous for our family, not to mention the fact that I was attempting to, to do things that would help keep our kids safe and safeguard their health and well-being. And then you have someone else with millions of, of audience that is saying that I am an actress and that Jesse never existed and that Sandy Hook mm -hmm never happened. And of course, that's the easier uh, story to believe, right? That that uh, 20 first graders weren't slaughtered in two first grade classrooms as along with six educators. Right. Uh, you wish it wasn't days. true. Yeah, right. yeah, we wish that it wasn't true. Uh, the truth is that uh, we have to we have to have the courage to face the hard truth. I mean, he was peddling lies that one in five Americans believed. Come on, it is our responsibility to keep our kids safe. And so I had to hold him accountable for those lies. And I think that the judgment in the case did exactly that. And I think that anyone else going out there. Uh, and peddling lies is going to think twice about it. Well, we Scarlett Lewis, you're, you're choosing love and choosing light, and we appreciate you choosing us to share you and your son's story. Thanks for being with us Thank today. Thank you. Thank you.